Members, welcome back to our online lessons. This is Kampara Karate Primary School. As, we, as I introduced myself last time, I'm Arnito Deborah, and I'm teaching Primary 5 English. We are still talking about verbs. And I hope that during this time, you have stayed safe, you are washing your hands, you're sanitizing, and you're not touching your men. Remember, said men means mouth, eyes, and nose. Uh, as we talk about verbs, I gave you an exercise last time. I told you to write five sentences using verbs that end with letter E, and when we're forming the past form of those verbs, we add, it, we add D. Even when we are forming the past participle form of those verbs, we add D. I hope you wrote those sentences, and now we are going to look at these verbs, which I have here. I hope you use some of those verbs. We have the word relates, and in its past form, it becomes related. In past participle, it becomes related. For example, here we say, Tom related to John well. Then demonstrate, demonstrate. In past form, it becomes demonstrated. And in participle, it becomes demonstrated. For example, you can say, the teacher demonstrated to us how to make a pinhole camera. We have the word organ, ignore. From the word ignore, in past tense it becomes ignored. In past participle it becomes ignored. You can say, Ruth ignored me when I called her. We have the word organize. In past form, organized. Participle, organized. For example, I organized my bedroom neatly. We have the word arrange in past form, arranged. In past participle, arranged. I arrange my books neatly on the desk. We have the word reduce in past form, reduced. In past participle, reduced. You can say, road accidents have reduced during the COVID-19 lockdown. Decrease, it becomes decreased in past form and also becomes decreased in past participle. For example, you can say, you can say cutting down forests decreases the amount of rainfall we receive. We have the word define in past form, defined. In past participle, it remains defined. So decrease in past form, decreased in past participle, decreased. For example, we can say because of COVID lockdown, the income of many people has decreased as they no longer go to work. We have the word define, she becomes defined, and in participle, defined. For example, I don't know how to define transpiration. We have the word remove. In past form, removed. It still remains removed in past participle. Can you remove all the dirt in this class? We have the word use in past form, used in past participle, used. I, I never used, I never used to listen to the radio when I was a young girl. I never used to listen to the radio when I was a young girl. Capture, past tense, captured, past participle, captured. The cameraman captured all the events that took place at the wedding. We have the word imagine, becomes imagined, past form imagined. For example, we can use the best form of imagine. Remember we said 
with the best form we can use with modal verbs. I can't imagine life without my father. Then compare becomes compared in participle compared. Can you compare Lake Victoria and Lake Choga in terms of formation? So I hope you have checked your sentences. I know you have other words because we can't write all the words that end with letter E. I hope some of the words you have are here. Now, we are going to today's lesson. We are still continuing with regular verbs, but we are looking at verbs that add it to form the past form and the past participle form. These regular verbs usually end with consonant sounds. Because they end with consonant sounds, that's why you add ed to form the past participle and the past form. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to write past forms and past participle forms of regular verbs that end with consonants by adding ed. Then you should be able to use the words that you have formed should use those words to construct meaningful sentences with the correct grammar. So then we are going to look at regular verbs that take it. Uh, I want you to look at these pictures and I want you to think of other, these actions that, remember we said verbs are actions. These actions that are taking place here, they, they, when you're naming them, they add it. So I want you to think of those verbs. I want you to write them down. Write for me six verbs that end with id to form the past form and the past participle form. Uh, we are going to draw a table like the one I used in review. The table should have three columns. One column for the best form, the second column for the past form, and the third column for the past participle form. I'm giving you only one minute to write those verbs. I want six verbs. You write the verb in past form, in a base form. Add that verb in a pre past form by adding it. And the last part is the participle form also by adding it. You have one minute. Now, I'm going to demonstrate some actions here. I demonstrate an action. You name that action. You give me the verb, the action that I'm doing. We have this one. I hope you know the name. And I'm using it. I'm using it. So which action am I doing? Write that verb. Which verb have you written? Yes, the verb is com in our base form. Let's add it on our six verbs. It becomes the seventh verb. It is com. Then we say the teacher combed her hair. The teacher combed her hair. That is in past form. Then we say the teacher has combed her hair. We are using the past participle form. Then, this is a container. It contains petroleum jelly. And we use it every morning after bathing. Even in the evening after bathing, we rub our hands and then we smear it on our bodies. So which verb is that? Can you write that verb? Okay. Thank you for writing it. The verb is smear. What does it become in past form? We add ed. And it becomes, yes, it becomes smeared. For example, can we use the word smear in a sentence? I smear my body with body cream every morning. Ruth smeared her body with petroleum jelly after bathing. We have this. 
It's called a pointer. So you tell me, the, write down the action that I'm doing. Uh -huh. The action is point. The action is point. Then we say, the teacher pointed to the screen. The teacher pointed to the screen. Then we have this is a mirror. Every time after bathing, after smearing ourselves, we, we look at ourselves in the mirror. As we look at ourselves, we try to check if we are okay. So the verb is look. When we use it in a sentence, we can say, I always look at myself in the mirror after dressing. Tom looked at, her, at himself in the mirror. Tom looked at himself in the mirror yesterday. Thank you. Now, we have this. It is a bag. After everything I've done, I have to keep my things in the bag. So, I get the comb. I put it inside. I get the mirror. I put it there. I get the petroleum jelly. I put it there, then I cross the bag. So which action have I done? Write it down. Yes. We say the verb is pack. The verb is pack. I packed my things in the bag. I packed my things in the bag. For example, you can say the teacher has packed her comb in the bag. The teacher has packed her comb in the bag. Then, now let's look at the actions. We have these actions. Action one and action two. All these are verbs that end with a consonant and we are going to add edit from the past tense. Which action is this? Someone is saying that people are standing but the word stand does not add does not add ed. So that's not what I want. They are standing, yes, but what are they doing? They are looking at the water. So the verb is look. We can say the pupils are looking at the dam. We can say the people are looking at the dam. Then we have our picture number two. We have this. Can you name these? What are they? They are means of water transport. What are they? They are dug out canals. And you can, if you can see in this picture, there are some people seated and they are sailing. They are sailing. So the verb is sail. In past form, it becomes sail. Even in participle, it becomes sailed. Remember, all the means of water transport, whenever you're using them, we use the word sail. You don't say, I drive the boat. That is wrong English. We say, I sailed the boat. He sailed a ship. Then we can continue and look at other pictures. For example, we have these people, these young children, during the COVID-19, they are active children. I hope you're also active at home. I hope you're helping your parents in doing house chores. These children are doing house chores. They are carrying. If you can look at them, what are they doing? This boy here is lifting a jerry can. So the word is lift. The verb is lift. Now, can we use the word lift in a sentence? We can say, the boy lifted a jerry can yesterday. The boy lifted a jerry can yesterday. Look at this girl. We say, the girl is about to lift a jerry can. A girl is about to lift a jerry can. Then we go to this picture. 
there is daddy and the son, the father and the son. What are they doing? They are praying. So the verb is pray. Can we spell the word pray? Yes, it is P-R-A-Y. P-R-A-Y. Let's use the word pray in a sentence. I pray every day. I pray every day. Peter prayed yesterday. John has prayed for the people. Then we have this one. We see this car. The car is not moving. Which verb do we use to describe a car which is not moving? The car is the car is parked. The car is parked. The word is park. Let's spell the word park. P A R K. P A R K. Park. So we say the car is parked. Then we have this boy and a goat. There is a rope here. You can see the boy is using a lot of effort. He's doing, using a lot of effort trying to take the goat. Which verb do we use to talk about using an effort to take something which does not want to move? The verb is pull. We say the boy is pulling a goat, but we are using past form and past participle. The boy has pulled a goat. The boy has pulled a goat. Here, you can see this boy and this man are trying to do an action. Which action is it? Very good. The action is lift. They, the boy and this man, the action is lift. And this action was done last week. They are not doing it right now. They did it last week. So what do we say? They lifted a sack. They lifted a sack. This boy is trying to help the man. The boy is trying to help the man. And the man said, oh, you, you are too young. You can't lift the bag. But the boy said, don't worry. I will help you. I will help you to lift this sack. Then in past tense, we can say, the boy helped the man to lift a sack. Then you can see these two. There is a baby and there is a cat. What action are they doing? They are praying. So we say, the boy is praying. The boy is playing with a cat. The boy is playing with a cat. So the verb is play. And they did it yesterday. So what do we say? The boy played with a cat. The boy played with a cat. Then this child here is a young child. Has not grown up and cannot walk. So the Child is walking on the legs and the arms. Which verb do we use? So when a child is walking on both the legs and the arms, we, the word, verb is crawl. Let's spell the word crawl. C-R-A-W-L. C-R-A-W-L. Crawl. The child crawled in the compound. The child crawled in the compound. These people, in social studies, they say we should protect wild animals. We are not supposed to kill these animals. We see this and the men. So what have they done? What have these people done? They have killed an animal. It is against the rules. 
it is a very bad act. I know your teacher of SST told you about poaching. So we can use two, two verbs here. We can use the word kill. We can also use the verb poach. Let's spell the word poach. P-A-C-H. P-A-C-H. The word is poach. This action, when you go to a game park and you kill an animal without permission, your, our teachers of SST said it is poaching. And the verb is poach. P-O-A-C-H. It is a very bad thing because it kills those animals which attract tourists. The men have poached a rhino. Then this... Uh, an, elephant. Eh? an elephant. Okay. <laughs> you know what's get off. Okay. So what do we say? The men have poached an elephant. This boy is leaning on a tree. The word is lean. Spell the word lean with me. L-E-A-N. L-E-A-N. Lean. And the past tense becomes leaned. The boy leaned against a tree. The boy leaned against a tree. We look at more pictures. Then we have this man. What is he doing? He is cutting the grass. What is he using to cut the grass? This machine, what do we call the machine used to cut the grass? It is a saw. Spell the word saw, S-A-W. S-A-W. The word is saw. The act of cutting anything using a saw is sawing. And we add ed. I know some of you are used to saw the past tense of C. But here we are looking at saw as a base verb. The act of cutting anything using a saw is sawing. So we say, the man has sawed the grass. Okay? Uh, there is, this one is also so, but the spelling is different. This so, the spelling is different. It is S-E-W, S-E-W. When you use a needle and a thread to make clothes, it is so. And what machine is used? A sewing machine. So, we say the lady is sewing a piece of cloth. Here, this is another saw. Still, we are on saw, S A W. S A W, the verb is saw. When this machine, this sharp machine, this sharp machine used to cut the wood is a saw. When you use a saw to cut anything that is sewing, so we say, the man is sewing a piece of wood. And in ED, we say, the man sewed a piece of wood. The man sewed a piece of wood. Maybe he wanted to make a chair. Maybe he wanted to make a cupboard. Maybe he wanted to make a table. Then, this is still the word saw. But the spelling is different. This time, the spelling is S-O-W. S-O-W. When you plant cereals in science, they say it is broadcasting method. You get the seeds and you throw them in the horse. That planting is called sowing. So, he is sowing cereals. This is rice. So we say, she sowed rice last month. She sowed rice last month. This is an animal which is doing a bad thing to another one. All animals are supposed to survive. But in science, we have what they call interdependence. I eat, I eat bananas, the lion eats me. We are, it is interdependence. So this lion 
is supposed to feed the zebra its grass and the lion eats the zebra. So the animals which feed on others are called animals of prey. The act of an animal eating another one is prey. But this time the spelling is different. It's not the one that when you're talking to God, when you're talking to God, it is also prey. But it is prey with P-R-A-Y. But the animal eating another one, it is praying, but spelling is P-R-E-Y. P-R-E-Y, pray. Now, can we use the word pray in a sentence here? The lion has prayed on a zebra. The lion has prayed on a zebra. Best form, lions prey on zebras. Okay? Then, we have this one. We are still on pray. We are still on pray. Let's go to our last slide. Break. Break. He is breaking a stick. The word is break. Sparing is B-R-E-A-K. Now let's look at the verbs I have. Let's check if they are the same that you have in your table. Have this word. Paint. Comes. Painted. Painted. Like how our classes are painted. Then we have act. Acted, acted. We act in place. Walk, walked, walked. I walked school every day. Wash, washed, washed. I wash my clothes in the morning. Laugh, laughed, laughed. Tom likes to laugh loudly. Look, looked, looked. We have already used looked. Now, let's do this exercise. Because we have already looked, because we have already looked at these verbs. You're going to use these verbs to construct sentences. One sentence for each verb. And you are free to use the three forms. You can use the verb in, in, in base form. You can use the same verb in past form or in past participle. One is blush and brush, pack and pack, break and break, play, pray, pray, so, so, so. You're going to write that exercise and for being a good crowd, for being a good audience, I thank you very much. See you next time. I hope you stay safe. I hope you sanitize, you wash your hands, Please don't go in the neighborhood. Don't move to other people's homes because COVID is still there. Till next time, God bless you. I remain Arnito Deborah of Kampara Quality Primary School. Thank you.